Next guest is a member of Congress who outright says he will not vote for this bailout plan. Joining us is Representative Thaddeus McCotter of Michigan and Chairman of the House Republican Policy Committee. Good morning, Congressman. Thank you for joining me. Those are very stark words. Explain to me, in your words, what you would prefer to see happen. Well, I think what we need to do is shift the debate from the public bailout as the first resort and try to find ways to incentivize private recapitalization with a last resort appropriate government backstop. This has not been offered to Congress. Congress understands that there's a need to act quickly. We understand that there are alternatives out there, however, that are not being allowed to be explored. This is what I think the disconnect between the administration has been and the members of Congress. Look, I'm a Republican. My nightmare scenario is a crisis occurs, Congress acts quickly, and someone expects something good to happen. We need to be responsible about this. We think that what Mr. Paulson has put forward and what Mr. Bernanke is, the first response was for the government to have a crisis and throw money at it and hope it goes away. That's not going to solve the problem. It may help in the short run, okay, but in so, the long run, it's going to be detrimental. So let me ask you this, Congressman. I actually talked to another member of Congress, uh, one of your Republican counterparts, earlier this morning about this. The privatization concept sounds fine, but the question is, do you know that you have the underlying bid from that private group of money to to support the kind of assets that we're talking about? Not at the present time, which is why the legislation is being proposed. What you have are investors with liquidity sitting on the sidelines waiting to see what happens because the market is very rational. The market right now is trying to correct the housing bubble. What we're trying to do is make sure that that does not exacerbate a credit crunch, but instead becomes a way in which the deflationary period, which is requisite, does not impact Main Street, frees up credit. And so what you have to do, in our mind, is change appropriate laws to incentivize, tax, incentivize private recapitalization by making the toxic asset less toxic and leaving the government as a last resort backstop should that process not first occur. Okay. Repatriation is one way to get capitalization into the system, allowing 0% capital gains for people who will come yep. in and purchase toxic mm -hmm. assets and remove them. But these are options that have never been explored because, Alexis, as we've heard, the argument is if you don't support the Paulson plan completely, you want to do nothing. That is false. The argument is if you don't support the Paulson plan, you don't understand the problem. That is false. We on Main Street understand the problem. We are upset that as responsible people who did not bring this about, we are being asked first and foremost to step forward to put in yes. $700 billion to restore confidence to a market, okay. as opposed to trying to have the market find ways through appropriate government policies to get confidence enough to bring their own money in. Could not agree with you more, and I think most Americans feel very much the same way, but there is a perception, like it or not, that this will get done in the next couple of days. Knowing that, given that, when you look at the oversight of this, what needs to happen to make sure that we are not giving one individual power to control the kinds of dollars we're talking about? And this is, this is where the danger comes in, Alexis, because the argument is going to be that because of a failure of poor governmental policies at the front end of the mortgage crisis within the GSEs, and because of a failure of self-government on Wall Street, that the federal government is going to have to come in and start expanding its powers over all areas of the free market, not just Wall Street, but anywhere you get government money, you're going to get government strings. This is why a lot of us believe that should be something that you try to avoid at all costs and try to get the market to protect itself from government coming in and doing this, putting strings on money for a short-term solution, which may or may not work, even according to Mr. Paulson and Mr. Bernanke. All right, Congressman, we've got to leave it there. Thank you very much. I'm glad you brought up your points, and uh, I know the next couple of days are going to be certainly tense ones. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Alexis.